Welcome to the Sales Problem Podcast. Here is the problem we are trying to solve. Every year you hit the reset button and you have to beat your numbers and grow your business. You have to get quicker, faster, and better. We are two guys trying to solve that sales problem, trying to help you grow by enhancing what you know about the art and science of selling and personal development. Along the way, we're going to interview some interesting characters and debate some different angles about this common business problem. So thanks for joining us. Let's get growing. Welcome, listeners, to the Sales Problem Podcast. This is a special part two, and we've never done a part two, but when we were speaking with uh, Eureka, we were having so much fun that we almost went uh, about 50 minutes, and he was dropping so many uh, pearls of wisdom that we wanted to break this into two sections. So uh, what's happening in this episode, wait until you hear the story that Eureka tells about him coming down the last quarter mile and his message on focus. So we've got a lot packed into this episode, but you may hear some birds, you may hear some leaves rustling behind me. Uh, If you can't see what's behind me because you're driving and you're you're just listening, uh, we're in a beautiful resort uh, in Dominican Republic at the Club Med. And Steve, why don't you tell our listeners who can't see us uh, (laughs) what they might be looking at and why we're here. This is a wonderful location, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. Lovely uh, palm trees in the background. Yes, birds chirping. Uh, Every day is beautiful. Uh, But this is President's Club, Dan. Yeah. We are are reunited after 20 years. Last one was in Maui, in Hawaii, when we were just young, young salespeople. Feels like so long ago. Here we are reunited in the Dominican, enjoying, uh, you know, getting to know other sales professionals that are at the top of their game. So it's it's an excellent week. Kind of ties back to Eureka and his story about getting to the top. Um, I was going to say his story around, you know, that race that he describes in the second part of the episode. I felt like I was on the horse going around each corner as he described the story. So uh, for the people that are listening... You got to stay tuned on this one because it is very good. You'll love the ending. It's so, um, uh, well, for me, it was impactful to understand, you know, if you're at the top of your game and how quick things can change, um, it's enjoyable. But uh, one one other thing, Dan. Yes. There, I, I feel like there's there's three key relationships in, in top performers. That's what I'm seeing this week. One is okay. they've got outstanding relationships with their clients. They are in tune. They know what they need. They deliver on it. There's a, there's a very good communication back and forth with their top clients, right? That's how they become successful. That, that's number one relationship. The other relationship is internal to the company. They've got strong relationships with the team, the people that help them deliver on the promises that they make, and uh, communication with internal staff with admin, with finance, with customer service, all the people that make things happen behind the scenes. So that's that's relationship number two. And then the third one, where you and I come in, it's family and friends and, and the connections you have with people that you enjoy to be with, that uh, bring you energy and make your day, make your world a little bit better, make yourself a little happier put yourself in a better space. And I think Eureka ties that back into mindset. But that's my note back to you, sir. Is it's great to hang out with you as a friend here in the Dominican after all these years and, and have some fun. Absolutely. I mean, relationships are so important. And it's not just the relationships that we have with our clients that produce the business. It's the relationship, too, that we have with our coworkers. You know, if you surround yourself with great people, you are going to find your way to sales growth. So listen to this part two with Eureka. He's going to keep dropping great knowledge. Enjoy part two. And remember, the more you know, the more you grow. Let's get into it. 
in wow. my mind all the time, the butterfly. And when I was riding the Queen's Plate, okay, um, you know, it's, uh, Queen's Plate is the, the, the big race that any jock want to win, any trainer want to win, any owner want to win. It's their dream to win the race, okay? And, um, and, um, and I, I was lucky to win in 2009, but in 2010 was even more special, the Queen's Plate. Why? Because the Queen Elizabeth was uh, in that, that day, she was uh, the one who uh, uh, rep in the race, uh, represent the race and, and give the trophy. And when we heard about that, that the Queen, Queen Elizabeth would be uh, in 2010, she was, she would be in the race. Um, my friend, the pressure was big. I was mm -hmm. facing a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, the expectation, you want to win your mind, everybody want to win, but you have to stay away from that mindset. You know, you have to bring the peace for you to be able to do your best. What I did, I was with the butterfly all the time in my mind. All I have to do is stick with my butterfly and stick with my river. That's it. Well, I was there or there. I catch myself, uh, um, uh, hold the queen's hands. I, I turn away from that that thought, and go back to the butterfly again, to bring peace. And of course, I was training taekwondo. I was doing my exercise. I was doing yoga that time, you know. And I can see all the people, all my team. I have a team that work for me. I have an Asian. I have a valet who take care of all my clothes. Every, like one week before, you can feel sense the energy that um that that they also uh also under pressure you know because they also want to win together with me you know i win we i don't let no one buddy talk about when they start talking about oh the queen is going to be here for listen that's focus now the moment is now the queen will deal with later okay i make sure I was not talking about seeing the queen or, or hold the queen's hands. Journalists come talk with me about, I said, I'll be prepared. I'm preparing myself now. All I want this moment is focus on my preparation. And that's what I was doing. Focus on the moment, preparing myself. But when I got there, I was full confidence. When I get on on my horse, not because I won that, that day, but because I, I was confident, because I knew inside myself that I did everything I have to do. Eureka, you know? this is why we wanted you on the podcast, because the story you just told is telling all of our listeners how to perform when the stakes are the highest. You know, when you're at the highest level when you've got other people depending on you and our listeners are, you know, business people and coaches and salespeople, and they've got their goals. They may have a certain level of pressure, but I mean, this is, you know, top of the food chain stuff. So some of the stuff that you said, I just want to highlight it for our listeners. When you talked about, you know, the butterfly or the river, I want to ask our listeners, what is that for you? What's the thing that brings you back to peace? You know, do you have simplicity built into your life? Is that the thing that you need? If you're feeling anxiety or you're feeling pressure, have you done uh, what, you know, Yuriko has done uh, to, to put these things in place so that you've got something to anchor, your, anchor yourself to? And, and I want to transition and keep, keep on this mind uh, set uh, point because there was another statement that you made um, Eureka in your TSN article, and I found it so profound. This was your quote. The message I want to give to people is if they're doing something they think is wrong, it's not because they're bad people. It's how they were programmed. I want to give them hope that they can go and get help and overcome this. Because if I can overcome myself, I believe anyone can. And that word programmed really stood out to me. So can you talk a little bit about how programming uh, comes into play, how we 
can program ourselves and also a little bit about what you overcame as part of your journey. Thanks for that question. Um, I've been working, um, uh, deep work in myself, uh, to reprogram myself, um, about, uh, since 2006. Okay. It's a long process. Um, that's not easy because we are not computer, you know, uh, we have to have a, a, a good understand. It's a different way to reprogram uh, ourselves. Coach is one of them, you know, like a good coach, like you ask the right question. The person will, um, like especially when you you know the person is talking about limitation about themselves and you ask the right question and they discover wow i can do better than that oh i have misunderstand about myself that happened right the haha moment in coach okay or another way is uh we work with our inner child that what the work i do okay uh, that is the work I teach. Um, it will, I work with um, with um, five sense sense uh, hearing, uh, the paladar, uh, smell, visualization, touch, uh, and all all what I mentioned here is connect with nature. Okay, um, with that inner inner child, I work. I spend a lot of time um, with my inner child when I was about um, six, seven years old. Okay, uh, I go back there all the time. I have techniques that I go back there all the time, and understanding myself. And every time the kid understand, because the kid was very, I went through trauma in my life, right? Um, a big trauma uh, when I was a kid. Um, and, uh, and now I have a lot of fears. And that fears cause, uh, what happened is when you get so much fears, you get anger. And anger, what anger does? Anger distort, uh, like twist our mind, twist our understand about ourselves. And one thing that I did was when I was a kid, I, um, I have a lot of misunderstanding about my own sexual sexuality. That's why I went to, you know, I became sex addic addicted. And, and then I started learning about myself, but it was not only about that. Uh, also I have to deal with a religion because I grew up um, in a religion where, uh, as a kid, I could not watch TV. Prohibit watch TV. I could not sing a music in my house when I was a kid. It's only you can sing the uh, music from the church. Okay? Uh, soccer. I love play soccer. Love play with uh, another kid. We could not play soccer. Soccer is part of any sport was part of devil. Any kind of entertainment was part of devil. So I have to deal with all this. And this creating a lot of anger inside myself it was a good thing because you know what? When I was 12, everything come in your life for a reason. Okay. If I, I didn't got so angry, I didn't move out when I was 12, 13 years old. You see, when I was 13, I think I was around 12, 13 years old. I moved from my house and I, I went, I went on my own because I could not hand anymore. But this cost you, you know, because the anger the people think, oh, when you anger and, and trying to be strong, uh, you're strong and, and it is a force like you use power that yes, you can use that to help you to go up in life. But the anger only can bring you to here. But for you to go to the top, anger doesn't help you. You have to get out, like stay away from anger. Why is that? I explain for you. When you see a master, uh, any master in something, let's talk about martial arts. Did you see how they move? 
they are smooth, no anger, okay, no power. And when they do thing, like LeBron James when they play, he can hold the ball, it's no power, you know, it's just the flow that he does, you know. A, a tennis player, Serena Williams, when she was playing, when she was on the, on the top, like when she plays, she's so smooth. Like you can see that she does the, the so easy. There is no anger. You know, it's, she's in the flow. He, LeBron James on the flow. I was on the flow with my horses. And I, and for me to get to that point, that was my dream. I have to do a lot of work with that kid for that kid for me to get out from anger to peace, to peace, then reflect what in my job. That, that was, that is the, the program that I talk about, reprogramming myself. The more I, I have awareness, the more my mind expands, the more peace I have, and the more I could be on the flow and do the thing that I have to do in the mo without power. It's no power. It was no power at all. It was Sound. automatic. It didn't work automatic. Me and the horse was moving automatic. Like LeBron James, when he throw the ball, it's no power. It's just he touch the ball, poop. Go to it's the right place. <laughs> it's effort. It's effortless. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. It's like you coaching. When you're in the flow, you make the, the, you don't need to force your question. So I'll just highlight a point that you made about doing the self work. I, I think that's so important. And there's going to be listeners that, you know, they've gone through trauma. They're holding anger. They've got fears. They've got limiting beliefs. And a powerful thing that I heard in what you're saying is that it, it didn't happen necessarily just to you. It happened for you. It was something that you took and channeled. And that's part of how you became the man you are, how you became the high performer is by channeling all that to the right places. So, Exactly. Exactly. Everything happened to us. Uh, listen, I went to a tough time in my life. I was not only about religion, uh, but uh, um, also uh, with this religion, you know, I'm not going to point all the religion is bad. No, some religion I believe is good. They have very good intention and it's good for community. Uh, but the one I was was really bad. Um, uh, also, I have a bad asthma, but asthma also came from where? from uh, the trauma that I have, you know, the abuse that I got, you know, I got really uh, abused mentally when I was a kid, not only me, but also my brother from my father. And, uh, and, um, and, and I, I have to do a lot of work to get up, get away from this anger, you know, Oh. And, uh, and, and he started to understand that everything came uh, for a reason. Today, I'm a better father. I have my son here, you know, beside me. I have my kids. And, uh, you know, I, I break, I, I'm, I'm trying to break the cycle, you know, for my family. Break the cycle. I'm not, this reprogramming was not only beneficial for me, but it's also beneficial for my family. I'm curious. Uh, thank you for sharing all that. You 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 dig deep into your into your life to to get through those uh, traumatic moments. Uh, I'm curious on a no way. pardon me. It's no another way. Yeah. As well, I know. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I have I have one quick question, and it's around learning from mistakes. Or uh, I find in sales you go into a you go into a deal or you go into a sale and you're overconfident and i don't know if you've done that in your racing career where you've walked in overconfident you knew you were going to rate win that race and things just fell apart like is there is there any le lessons learned from that has that ever happened to you <laughs> that happened to anyone 
<laughs> you know, see somebody say, oh, I, I, um, oh, that never happened to me. Or oh, he's lying or she's lying yeah. Yeah, because that happened. Okay. It's in point in life that we get confidence and happen. Anyway, I tell you a story. This happened more or less, I think it was 1999 or 2000. I was riding Macau. I was riding a horse called um, Big Win. I was the guy that always I pay attention on details. Okay. And what was the details, the Big Win? Big, big Win, he was a very strong horse, very intelligent. He would break from the gate very fast. Why? Because he was very he think very fast, okay? He was one of the, the strongest horse I ever rode, to be honest with you. And, but, but he has one detail, one characteristic that was very important. He was unpredictable. Many other jocks have told me, for saying, we could be careful with this horse. This horse is crazy. But I was overconfident because we already won a few races together before this big race. I was riding this big race called Macau Derby, one of the most prestigious races in Macau, okay? And there we are inside the starting gate. I am full confident. He was one of the favorites. I think he was the favorite or second favorite, something like that. But I have no doubt that he's not going to win the race. And there we are in the, in the gate, 14 horse few, the distance mile and an eight with two turn. He broke there very fast. Okay. And um, one more detail that I forgot to, to tell you that he liked to run, like he stay way off the pace. And he also liked to run on the inside, uh, close to the fence. That's the way he loved to run. Anyway, he broke there very fast. And then he started staying behind, behind. Already we went inside, close to the fence, the way he liked to run. First turn, he was focused. When he turned into the back stretch, he became more focused. And he already started positioning himself there, past some horse with very little effort. When he got to the second turn, he took off and he started passing many horse. And now we, re- we enter in the, in the home stretch, head and head with another horse who was running on the inside. And there we went fight for the win. In the last eight of mile, he already have almost a head in front. In the last 16 of mile, he's already have a shoulder ahead. In the last 50 yard, he was almost a length in the lead. At that point, the race was dominated already. His practice show win, could not get beat. But one detail happened. I lost my focus. I start celebrating in my mind with the owner and the trainer. But then another detail happened, my friend. The, uh, while I was celebrating, I relaxed my arm. That unpredictable horse didn't forgive me. He bowed to outside. I lost the rain. I tried to catch the rain as quick as I can to pull him back to the race. I pulled back to the race, and we finished second by a head. I knew all his detail, but I forgot one detail, my focus. Wow, I, I, I lo- <laughs> I, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about the result, but what a great story. You had me, you had me going around the racetrack right to the finish line. I'm like, oh, how did that happen? But I, I, I see your point, yeah. Daniel, everything was going good for us until yeah. the first detail happened. I lose my focus. Then I relax. Then I trigger another detail. I relax my arm. And then trigger another detail. Big Win also lost his focus. I'm telling you, that was one of the tough moments in my career, if I, I can say to you. It was very hard on me. I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson, my friend. I can tell you that there's people listening that are in business and sales, and they're saying the exact same thing. I've had the money spent before I got the deal. 
I, I was up on stage celebrating, you know, the, the top person of the year award. All I had to do was bring it in and I lost it at the last second. I didn't get the signature. That's, that's happened to so many mm -hmm. people. I want to pivot a little bit. I love that story, by the way. Um, questions. They're so powerful, especially you're a coach. So I want to end with there's people driving to a, to a call. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're about to get in front of a client. What's a question that you think they could ask themselves on the way to that door, either about themselves uh, or a question to ask a client, something impactful? What would you say is some of the best questions you've either asked yourself or, or asked somebody else while coaching? They, a question that never will get old, I believe. <laughs> when I was you in the morning or driving to a client, said, where is my mind have to be? What I have to do right now for me to be on my best? And take action. Do what you have to do. Stay disciplined. You know, that's, a, yeah, that's, that's, that's the key. That's amazing. Take action. Where I have to go now? Do I, for example, you want to talk to the client, you want to be calm, where your mind has to be. You have the answer. When I talk here about the butterfly, this is my way to connect with nature. It's some, maybe some listener will be thinking, oh, this guy thinking I can be uh, thinking about butterfly right now in my mind. No, no, it's not what I'm saying here. You know, this I'm just giving an exam example of myself, you know be in the river. Oh, he wants to swim. I not even like to swim. Oh, you crazy? No, no, it's not, not that. It's about you. I ask yourself, what is it that make you relax, make you peaceful inside yourself? Maybe could be um, a visualize a bird, for example, you know, visualize a horse or a dog. You know, some people, they are with their dog, they are on the best, best of themselves. You know, every single person has a different way to connect with nature, you know, or uh, walk in the sand, you know, walk on the grass, right? Um, everyone have a different way. But is the question is, um, yeah, what I have to do now for me to be on my best? Eureka. Yeah question yeah what, what, one of my happy places is with my dogs to start the day snuggled up with a coffee in my hand so you, you just made me think of that moment that's that's my peace before the day starts it's yeah. 4 a.m the tv's off my phone's away i've got a coffee and my two little italian greyhounds snuggling me oh, that's nice. The moment of peace I get the rest of the day is insane, but that moment comes every day. I look forward to it. And that's that little bit of peace. I love the question that you had, because what do you have to do next? It's almost like the race, you, you know, the race is one foot in front of the next. So what is that next step that you have to take? Focus on that step and then the next step. And then soon you're crossing the finish line. I just want to highlight some of the things I took out of our conversation today for our listeners. I got stay present, do the self work, uh, keep doing your best and stay consistent. We compete with ourselves. We're really just trying to create a better version of ourselves uh, day after day and look for your areas of peace and how you can create simplicity for yourself. Steve, over to you to uh, final comments. Anything you want to add? It's been an amazing podcast. Daniel, uh, it's been a privilege uh, to begin with, right? Thank you for sharing today. You, you call, it's uh, unbelievable stories. Uh, you were at, at the peak of your career. You've had all sorts of challenges. You've come through the other side. You mentor and coach now and, and give back which is really impressive. And I love the simplicity to some of the things you said about being present and, and the routine that you had, that you followed, that you stuck with, and that, and that 
brought you success. So all, all I say is thank you. Really, really, really appreciate your time today. And also, I want to say thank you, express my gratitude one more time for you, because you guys that create this podcast, how many people are going to help? Also, people, we need more people like you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. And who want to follow my work, they can go to my Instagram, The Big Eureka Brazil. And if someone speak Portuguese, uh, sorry, someone speak Portuguese, go to The Big Eureka Brazil. Or uh, English, my Instagram is uh, the Big Eureka, just the Big Eureka. Why the Big Eureka? You know, <laughs> my size. <laughs> it's a chance for me to be big. Is in my name, the Big Eureka. <laughs> There we you have it. One. That's good. The Big Eureka. Oh, yes, all, all of our listeners. Go out and get the book, Riding for Free Freedom. We've been racing our way to the finish line with Eurico Rosa da Silva, and it has been such a wild ride. I hope our listeners held on tight as Eurico dropped some amazing stories and his incredible knowledge to apply to winning the race. If you're out there today, go out there, win that race. This has been the Sales Problem Podcast. Please remember to follow us, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you have any feedback, we would love to hear from you. So please email us at the sales problem podcast at gmail.com. Remember, the more you know, the more you can grow. And we're here to help you get the growth you need to thrive and succeed. We are the great Canadian growth guys, and we are getting you answers to solve the sales problem. Keep growing your business, growing yourself, and growing your sales. Until next time. Welcome to the Sales Problem Podcast. Here is the problem we are trying to solve. Every year you hit the reset button and you have to beat your numbers and grow your business. You have to get quicker, faster, and better. We are two guys trying to solve that sales problem, trying to help you grow by enhancing what you know about the art and science of selling and personal development. Along the way, we're going to interview some interesting characters and debate some different angles about this common business problem. So thanks for joining us. Let's get growing.